they said this would be easy. You learn to draw boxes, you learn to draw cylinders, and then you learn to draw the figure as boxes and cylinders, and you're halfway there with your figure drawing, right? So when I first tried to do this, it was almost impossible. And then I tried again, and it was still impossible. And it's not just me. I put out a survey on Instagram, I put out a survey on YouTube, and most people have had this experience of it being really difficult, confusing, frustrating. So if that's you, I'm here to say that's not your fault. In my opinion, this isn't easy. Why? Because there's no boxes and cylinders in the figure. The figure is way more nuanced and complicated than that. Whereas boxes and cylinders are really simple. So there's a big gap. And bridging that gap, moving from really complex and visualizing something really simple within that, it takes a trained eye. It's, we need to take baby steps towards it. My name's Kenzo, this is Love Life Drawing, and today, together, we're gonna start to take those baby steps towards being able to do that. So, the way that we're gonna start to do this is by finding boxes in increasingly complicated objects and then finding it in a part of the figure. And if you follow along with me, I think you're gonna be able to do this. But before we do that, I wanted to talk a little bit about a really important principle, which is going from complex to simple. So I'm gonna draw a really, really complicated road. So imagine this is some kind of map and look at how complicated that road is. If I was gonna try and draw that road, so maybe I'll try and draw it down here and up here in the corner. Okay, I'm just gonna try and draw it. I'm following all these little curves and corners and stuff and blah, 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 blah. And by the end of it, maybe I've got some stuff in there that's kind of like this road. But the most important thing about this road is where does it start and where does it end? And I haven't got that because I wasn't thinking about that. I was just getting lost on these curves along the way, right? So a really, really nice place to start if I wanted to draw this road in a meaningful way is to find the start point and then find the end point and then like draw a line between them and just think about the angle and the distance between the start and the end. Those are two, if you think about a road, those are two pretty important characteristics of a road. If I then wanted to go to the next level, instead of now going, okay, I'm now gonna go into my crazy curves and stuff, I can just do one level up. So I'm gonna stick with straight lines. A straight line is just an angle and a length. You know, how long is it and what's the angle of it? That's all I need to know for a straight line. It's so easy. Whereas these curves, it's like, okay, it turns a bit like this and then it goes like that. It's, it's, it's too much, right? So what I could do is I could just do a straight line up to this point and I could do a straight line up to this point. And then what shall I do now? Maybe I could do just a straight line down to here, a straight one to here, a straight one all the way down to here, you know, and... <laughs> I wish I hadn't drawn it quite so complicated, but maybe we can fast forward this bit a little bit. Okay. But you can see how having these straight lines. Now, if I want to draw this bit of the road, all I've got this straight line. So all I need to do is I just need to think, okay, well, it just comes up and it comes down like that. And I'm still on the right track. I'm not going to lose my way. I'm just finding these details within this simple structure that I've laid down. So now for the next bit, I just need to find that. So the thing to pick up on with this is how much information I cut through to put down these straight lines. Some places the green curvy road is going way off the yellow line, but still the yellow lines are useful. And it's gonna be the same with the boxes when you're drawing the figure with boxes or cylinders or whatever. They're just like these straight lines. They're just gonna tell us what you know? angle is this shape, this form on? What's happening, roughly speaking, with the perspective? It's not really gonna closely match all the organic nuances of the figure, but it's gonna cut through a lot of the nonsense and give me some more basic information, like where does it start and where does it end? So, in order to like build up our abilities with this, we're gonna start to find some boxes in some simple 
shapes. Here's a carton of milk. Hopefully you can see a box in this reasonably easily. Um, so here's the outer edges of this box. It's pretty straightforward. You know, there's a, a little thing on the top of it. So the trickier part here is gonna be imagining the edges that I can't see. So I'm just gonna try and imagine where those edges would be. And it's okay, I might not get it perfectly right. I don't have x-ray glasses to check. But one thing that I do want to make sure of is that my edges, as they're going away from each other on this box, they're parallel lines, as they go away from me, they should converge a little bit. And the, the stronger the angle is to my eyes, the faster they'll converge. But the main thing is that as they go away from me, they shouldn't be getting further and further apart, which can happen easily with a box when you don't, without even realizing it. So very gently, these lines are very gently converging towards each other as they go away from me, you know? Okay, so that one is pretty easy because it's a carton, it's basically already a box, right? So let's make it a little bit harder. How about this thing? <laughs> this box looks really gross, it looks like bugs in there. Those are raisins. Um, and you can notice that the top you know, top plane of this box, it has rounded edges. So that's a little bit tricky, but it's not too bad because I could imagine a rectangular top plane just kind of uh, like going a little bit beyond those rounded edges. Oops. So that's not too bad. But already you can see that we're starting to imagine things about this form. It's it we're starting to imagine things that aren't there. So we've added a little bit in order to help make a box around this thing. So another thing about this box is it tapers inwards as it goes downwards, right? So I don't want my edges of my simple box to go inwards as it goes downwards for this exercise. I mean, if you were just drawing this, you could just draw it that way. But I wanna find a simple box with parallel edges. So I could imagine a box around this thing as if it didn't have those edges coming in. And this isn't the only way to draw this box. You could also have a box within this form. So you could chop off the bits at the top that stick out too far. You know, you don't have to do it around it. You could do a box within it and then add these bits around it. But we're already starting to imagine stuff. Okay, so similar thing with this toaster. You can see it's very boxy. You can see its corners and stuff, but it tapers in at the top and we could draw a box within it or we could draw a box around it. The thing I wanted to pick up on on this one is look at how curved that corner is there. Can you see how curved that corner is? It's got a very curved corner and a box doesn't have one, but a proper box has sharp corners. But you can easily see how, and even though it's got a curved corner, it is still a corner. You could visualize it as a sharp corner if you wanted to. Like there's light coming in, hitting this plane and not hitting this plane. And somewhere along this corner is the edge of the shadow. So it's just a small area where the edge of the shadow could be. And then there is a big plane on either side of that corner. So even though the corner is curved, you can still see it as a corner. Now there are some things like this glass where there's no, you know, it's all curved in a uniform way. It's so curved that there's no plane and there's no corner that the plane, it goes from one plane to another with a corner on it. That doesn't happen here. It's just all curve, right? And there's some places on the figure where you can imagine a plane and another plane and then a sort of corner on it. And then, you know, even on my face, you know, the face has got loads of details. It's all a bit curved, but you can imagine a corner on my face and you can see that light is going to hit this plane and not this plane, you know? So sometimes, there's going to be a really curved surface on the figure and there's no point trying to put a corner on it. And sometimes it's more like this where it's curved and it's not crispy corner like on a nice box, but 
there it's like flat and flat and the curve is quite sharp and then you can see a corner there and imagine a corner there okay the next one is this one so this one you could imagine a box around this one but and this is more about how many boxes should I use? Should I try and do lots of little boxes or try and do a big box? Well, as much as possible, I think it's good to simplify to fewer things. Like when I was doing my road, I didn't want to do a million straight lines, but at the same time, if I didn't use many at all, I'm really deviating from the truth. And so here, if I just did one big box around this thing, that could be useful as a starting point. But towards the bottom, I'm really going far away from the truth of it. So maybe what I could do here is have a box for the top lip thing here, and then maybe have a box for the second section of it, and then have a box for the bottom bit. So I have three boxes, and then all I have to do is remove that curvy bit at the bottom from the bottom box and I'm not so far away. So it's a balancing act. You don't want to use a million boxes and cylinders, but if you just used one big box, it might not be, it might be too far away. So you just got to use what you like to use. Like in the torso, I think using one box isn't that helpful because you're not finding important and in, you're not picking up on some important and interesting differences between the rib cage and the pelvis. But two boxes is probably gonna be enough. Okay, so the last one is this bleach. You guys are just seeing all our household goods here. This bleach thing. So again, this time you can see the plane here is curved. You, can you see those white lines on there? The plane is curved here. And even on this, on this side, it's curved. If we, if we see that writing, it's slightly curved on that plane. And again, there's a curved corner between them. But even though the plane is curving, you can see that it's still basically a plane. You know, you can imagine this, you could cut through these curves and see that as a flat plane and see that as a flat plane as your starting point. So it's time to apply this to the figure. Now I mentioned the rib cage and the pelvis and stuff. That is too hard to start with. In order to do that, you're gonna to need to understand various things about the anatomical clues that you're looking at, and then be able to figure out where the edges of your boxes should be. So we can visit, we can talk about that in a future video. But the best place to start with finding a box is the wrist. So just like with that bottle, we can see that the top of the wrist is, there's a lot going on. If you really look at the details, it goes like this and it's a bit curved and stuff, but cut through that, just like on the map, look, it's pretty straight here. That's pretty flat. All the way up to here, I'd say, is all, this is all, this whole bit, it's kind of flat. Can you see that? <laughs> So all of that is pretty much flat plane. And then on the other side, shall I use a different color? On the other side, you know, there's stuff, it kind of sticks out here and stuff, but let's just cut through that. And we'll figure out, oh, it's not lined up here and here. So we'll find another flat plane here. Pretty flat, not that flat but for our purposes, pretty flat. On the sides, we might have to go a little bit further, cut through a little bit more, but it's not gonna be that bad because the wrist is very boxy. You know, it's a bit kind of coming outwards, but it's not that bad. That's a fairly flat plane. And here it's curving out even more, but just like that bleach bottle, I can cut through that and see a plane. Okay. I thought I would do this and it would be like, and now look, it looks just like a box on my wrist, but I don't know if it really does. Uh, maybe I'll try and add the box digitally to make it clearer. But hopefully you can look at your own wrist and you can see bottom plane, top plane, side plane, side plane. There's a little section of quite a flat box here. As you go up the forearm, 
it's not a box anymore. It's too curved. We've reached a point here where it's no longer, you know, plain, plain, plain. So it's not a box anymore. You might like to draw it as a box and just, because this bit's fairly flat if my palm is like this, and this bit's fairly flat, you might like to cut this bit off and draw the whole thing as a box if you want. It's a tool, you use it the way you want to use it. For me, I find an egg shape here that turns into a box down here is nice. So if you could start to draw your forearms as a kind of egg shape with a which turns into a box, that's going to be a really great starting point for learning to build your figures this way. And then later on, you can start to learn about the landmarks that are going to help you turn the upper torso roughly corresponding with the rib cage into a box and the pelvis into a box. But we're not going to go that deep today. So just some forearms with the wrist as a box. Okay, they just started the noisiest lawnmower in the world outside, so I have to cut this off here. Uh, let me know, has this been a useful set of baby steps towards this construction idea, or was this all clear as mud, um, or maybe just a bit stupid? Let me know in the comments below if this has helped you out and, and your experiences with this method and I uh, really want to hear about it. And there should be some other videos up on the screen. Check one of them out. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.